All right. <clears throat> All right. Good evening. We will give the world a few minutes to join us. Join me live. Praise God. Hallelujah. It is time for the Living Water live stream Bible study. If you are out there, um, share the link. Amen. Grab the notes. Um, we're going to pick up where we were yesterday, um, not yesterday, last week. Let us know. Hey, my Aunt Mary and my cousin Mary are in the room. Praise God. Good to see you all connected. Hello, Katrina. My friend Ruth. Praise God. I see other people joining on. I see the, the little thing that lets me know how many people are, are viewing. Um, um, say something, say hello, let me know where you're watching us from. Um, Carol from uh, Ontario, glad you could join us. Good evening, Gwendolyn. Um, another Canadian friend, good evening, Kathy. Praise God. Praying for you guys, you know, I don't know why they want to keep the border shut down so that we cannot get to one another. But praise God, thank God for technology. Amen. Let's use it while we can to spread the gospel. Um, good evening to my friend Jacintha. Praise the Lord. Glad you are with us. Amen. All right, share the page, share the link, share the notes. We're picking up. I reposted them. Um, I reposted them from um, last week, just in case people misplaced it. You know, sometimes people do that. They don't know what they did with their notes. So I um, posted them again. And also for anybody that, you know, is joining us for the first time, this week, and you didn't get the notes from last week, I reposted them on my page. So you'll need them for class tonight. Uh, praise God. Amen. Somebody's saying Canada is open. Well, if that's the case, it just opened today because it wasn't open last time I was on the freeway. It said essential travel only. Um, good evening to Eva. Praise God. All right, um, let's pray. Well, first, before we do that, I want to um, announce um, my retreat that is coming up very soon. I used to do an annual um, Intimacy with God uh, retreat at Lake Huron up in the FUM area. Um, and I haven't done it in years but the Lord began to um, lay something on my heart and speak to me about what he was calling the ancient pathways um, that, and it has to do with prayer. And the spirit of the Lord really began to um, speak to my heart about, you know, you know, what is the most ancient pathway and begin to, you know, tell me what that was. And, and um, I said, okay, you know, maybe I, I need to write a book. And the Lord very, you know, I was very clear that the Lord said, no, he didn't so much want it to be a book as he wanted it to be an encounter, an experience. And so that is what we are doing. Um, um, I found a location. I felt the Lord pushing me to set a date because I was dragging my feet. And so I set a date and I've really been listening. And so um, this will be a time away um, from whatever it is that is your world where you will meet with the Lord on the ancient pathways of prayer for an encounter with him. And that is coming up July the 14th, no, 
July 16th through the 18th. I almost gave you the wrong dates. July 16th through the 18th. Um, um, but you must be registered if you want to go. You must be registered by the end of this month. I've been advertising it for a while. I had initially only reserved 21 spaces, but we've gone above that number. So we opened it back up. So if you want to come, the cost is $165. That pays for a private room for you at St. Francis Retreat Center. You'll have a private room for two nights three days. It starts Friday evening, all day Saturday through Sunday morning. We have to check out at 12 noon. So you'll have you'll, that, that 165 covers your room for two nights, five meals, dinner on Friday, three meals on Saturday, um, breakfast on on um, Sunday morning. And of course, Soterios Ministries will provide lots of snacks and things for the in-between sessions. And so you're, you are not being charged for the materials that you will receive. You are not being charged for um, my, my presence there and my you know, facilitation and guidance through the process. Um, you are not being charged for any of the other things that we will be um, um, sharing with you. You're just paying for your room and board, okay? It's $165. Um, um, so, uh, I don't know what... Um, okay, they're talking about coming into Canada. Um, so, anyway, I'm talking about my retreat, which is right here in Michigan. It is at... St. Francis Retreat Center, which is in DeWitt, Michigan, which is right near Lansing, okay? Um, it's called the Ancient Pathways. And what we're going to be doing, it's a, a, a time of prayer and um, where I'll be teaching on some things connected to prayer and then giving you the time and the opportunity to actually go and do it. St. Francis is 95 acres of beautiful land, like 20 something gardens set up around the property. The building that we'll be in, the chapel is there where we'll have all our meals, our rooms, everything in one spot. And I think I have an anticipation that it will be a phenomenal time in the presence of the Lord. And so um, we will be um, studying, I'll be providing you with guidance and activation in some ancient forms of prayer, ways that the church for thousands of years or hundreds of years, anyway, a couple of centuries, not centuries, you know, yeah, a couple thousand years, has been praying. And even before that, because it goes all the way back to Genesis, we're going to look at some things. Um, and so we're going to look at solitude and silence. You know, how do you encounter God in solitude and silence? We're going to look at um, what's called the examine, um, which I happen to love. I love that spiritual practice. Lectio Divina, Visio Divina. These are all sacred reading, sacred seeing, um, and how that um, can be a launching pad into prayer and encountering the Lord. The Jesus Prayer, also known as Breath Prayer. A Fixed Hour Prayer, um, the Sursum Corda and Communion. We're going to talk about walking with God, creating sacred space. Um, so there's um, several things that we will be doing beyond just talking about praying in other tongues. You know, now that's okay, particularly for the charismatic people. But there are lots of other ways that you can be intimate with and engage the Lord. Okay, so um, um, okay, so. Um, I would love to see you there. If you um, want to come and you are struggling financially, then you need to message me, you know, okay? Um, and we can see how we can um, try to assist you in that process, but you need to, you need to contact me. Okay. And you're running out of time because today is June 22nd and we're going to cut off the registration at the end of this month, beginning of July, because we need to prepare and have, make sure that we have materials for everyone that is coming. Okay. 
The information is on my page. You do not need to be vaccinated to go to the re retreat. That's them talking about something over in Canada. Okay. Um, so I'm not vaccinated and I plan on being at St. Francis, praise God. And I do not plan on getting any shots. Okay. So, okay. For the record. Okay. So let's pray and we're going to jump in. Father, thank you for um, this opportunity that you give us to come together, to study your word, to sit at your feet, to break open the bread of life, to just be with you, to learn of you. And so Holy Spirit, we invite you to brood over the top of this, this study and across the regions that are represented by the people that are streaming. I pray that you would fall on them, that you would blow on them, that you would ignite a fire in their heart, that you would break seals of revelation off the word, that they might have an aha moment, that they might see and sense and hear and know and understand something radical that they've not seen before. So Lord, we bless you, we thank you, um, and we have an explosive expectancy that you're going to meet us in this place today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So let's see who came on while I was chatting. Good evening to my friend Elizabeth, uh, Anne Elizabeth. Um, Brenda, good evening. Gladys, good evening. Claudia, good evening. Cheryl, good evening. My friend Mayu, good evening. Praise the Lord. Donna, good evening to you. Praise God. All right, guys, let's, ju let's jump in. Um, your notes are on my Facebook page, okay? When you print it out, it's a whole pack of paper. <laughs> several pages. Um, I'm teaching this by request. Someone requested that we do this, so let's quickly review um, what we, turn off that music, let's quickly review what we have gone over so far, and um, then we are going to um, pick right back up where we were. Okay, so I'm going to go really fast for a few minutes so that I can review. Okay, so essentially, we have been talking about three secrets for effective prayer um, whenever we come into the courts of heaven. Um, uh, this material is taken from um, out of my own head and research, but also from the t a teaching that was done by Robert Henderson, who has a book on the courtrooms of heaven, that type of thing in the courts of heaven. So <clears throat> what we said on last time was that a lot of people don't know how to pray in a way that they get results, you know. And um, um, we've been, a lot of us have been taught that prayer is an activity that takes place on a spiritual battlefield. Well, that is an aspect of prayer, but you come to the retreat, you I mean, prayer, you know, so, there, are, there are, sometimes prayer is saying absolutely nothing. It's being with and in the presence of the Lord. So prayer is wonderfully diverse, you know? Um, so one of the things that you find is that when Jesus taught on prayer, he didn't put it on a battlefield. Um, he put it in a courtroom, which is very interesting. So we looked at Luke chapter 18, where Jesus told the story of the widow and the unjust judge. And um, we went into the meaning of that parable and we pulled out three key principles from that narrative. One, when we pray, we're stepping into the, the judicial system of the kingdom of God. Okay. And we established that all activity in the spirit realm is based on what is legal. You, if you don't remember anything else, you need to remember that. Okay. We talked about how Jesus' death on the cross was the greatest legal transaction in human history. Um, and so the, the, the terminology that Jesus uses at the end of the, the crucifixion, when he says, it is finished, he is referring to 
um, every legal mandate necessary for the redeeming of the whole of creation had been dealt with, okay? So we looked at how Jesus legally overthrew the powers of darkness. Um, so we talked about how when we draw on the legal victory established at the cross, then we see um, breakthrough become a reality in the earth. So we, we are executing into place the verdicts from the finished work of the cross until everything in human history ultimately lines up to the will of God. We are to occupy until he comes, okay? So we talked about how we are not a lot, we're, we're, when you think in ter terms of courtroom terminology, we are the plaintiff, but we are also the bailiffs, the officers of the courts of heaven who execute the arrest of the enemy and keep order in the kingdom of God. Then we looked at the second principle that um, where, um, um, which is interesting that in that courtroom scenario with the widow and the judge, the woman never spoke to her adversary. She spoke to the judge. She told the devil, talk to the hand. <laughs> okay. She talked to the hand. Okay. So um, um, we looked at how order is very important. Um, we talked about how we take away the devil's legal right in the courtroom and th we, that's, we deal with that in the courtroom. And once we have done that and gotten the, the verdict and the, the order, then we can go onto the battlefield to execute the verdict. And so we said, this is imperative for success. And I know I'm going fast, but this is review. Okay. Um, so let's see, we talked about how the enemy likes to resist us in the spirit realm and he looks for legal issues, legal things, things that he can use against us to resist us. And then we broke down some terminology in scripture where um, the, the um, at first Peter five and eight says that um, our adversary, the devil, adversary is legal terminology. It's the word antidikos. It means one who brings a lawsuit, who it speaks of a legal um, position. So the enemy wants to bring a lawsuit against us. He looks for a legal reason to be able to devour us. Okay. That's why Peter says he's seeking somebody to, to devour. He cannot devour you unless he has a legal reason to be able to do so. And so um, he's trying to build a case against him, against us that grants him the right to devour and destroy us. So we broke that word down in the Greek and to the English. It's in your notes. That part was really good. Um, and so we said um, that your adversary wants to bring a lawsuit that will deny what is rightfully ours. And so we talked about how that's one of the reasons why sometimes people pray and they're praying in agreement with the word of God, but they're not getting answers. And it could be that there is a case against us in the spirit realm that is denying the heavenly court, the legal right to answer our prayers. And so we went into how, um, Re revelations 12, 10 talks about how there's an accuser of the brethren and that word accuser, again, that is legal terminology. It is the katagoros in the Greek. It means a complainant at law. So the accuser is the one who brings the complaint, okay, um, against us and before the high court of heaven. And so if we're going to see answers, we have to silence the antidikos and the katagoros. In other words, our accuser and our adversary, we have to silence, silence um, them if we are going to see answers. Okay. Then we said the third secret um, was found in Luke um, 18 verses seven through eight, where Jesus is teaching about the um, coming before God as judge. And we learn how to navigate the courtroom of heaven. So we, we, we said prayers that are in agreement with God can go unanswered for two reasons, timing 
Either it's a timing issue, meaning that God is going to answer, but in the right time. Because sometimes we want things when we're not ready for it. So timing is critical if there's a delay. Or it could be that something legal is resisting us. So it requires us to, it requires us to really have a relationship with Holy Spirit and know the voice of the Holy Spirit so that he can, you know, help us with that, whether it's a timing issue or something legal. So then we went into courtroom procedure and that's in your addendum in the notes. Um, In the back, you'll find an addendum and we went over that. Um, It looks like this. So page, it looks like that is in your notes and man, that courtroom procedure, that was really good. Um, you enter from Psalm 100, <clears throat> you enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. We broke all that down. You repent of your sins, yours and everything in your bloodline. You want to remove Anything the enemy could try to use against you. You apply the blood of the Lord, of the Lamb, to all that. Then you declare and decree what God has promised you according to his word, and you rejoice. That's courtroom procedure. So then we came out of that, and we talked about how once the legal issues are dealt with by the blood of the Lamb, then the devil can no longer block answers from coming to us. Okay. Um, and then we talked about how, let's see, before the judge persistent. Oh, we talked about what persistent prayer is. That persistent prayer doesn't necessarily mean saying the same thing over and over. That persistent prayer can mean you keep coming before the judge and deal with legal hindrances and you keep coming in and deal with legal hindrances until you have removed everything that the enemy is using to stop your answer. And then we see breakthrough. Okay. Um, so then we went into session two, we looked at Daniel chapter seven, um, verses nine through 10, which actually gives us a biblical picture of the, the, the ancient of days, taking his seat upon the throne. There are thrones around him where the whole courtroom sits. So the court sat in judgment. The books are open. This is, this is, um, in the word of God. Okay. Um, so we looked at that. Um, we looked at Ephesians two and how the scripture tells us that we're seated with him. So just like you go to court and you're seated in the courtroom, there's the, the, the jury, there's the judge. We have a seat in heavenly places, okay? And so the court sits, the books are open, and God is ready to do some stuff. So we talked about that. We talked about how there's a, this is where we were. I think this is where I ended. There's a remantling taking place. You and I are being clothed with new garments. God wants to recommission us to finish some works that a lot of times in warfare and fatigue and frustration and a lack of help and resources, you know, got laid aside, you know, we, we lay our vision down and the Lord is exhorting us to pick some things back up, you know, to see some words that have been spoken over our lives fulfilled. So the Lord is nudging us to, to pick up what we laid down in fear or failure or frustration, pick it up, dust it off, and let's make it work again with the help of Holy Spirit and the angel armies. And so this is where I was. I I said, there has been a recommissioning, the voice of the Lord provoking and agitating and encouraging and exhorting us to get dressed, put our armor on, move out and take the land. The Lord has been doing that with me, like with my um, ancient pathways retreat. God spoke that to me. I know it had to be prior to the whole COVID shutdown. So it was the beginning of 2020. I wrote it in my journal and I kind of, you know, fooled around with it, looked some things up and kind of laid it on the shelf. But the Lord has been pushing me and exhorting me and encouraging me, pick it up. You need to move forward. 
teach my people how to pray. So that going back up that bunny trail, that retreat is all about prayer. That's it. You praying and being with the Lord. That's it. That's, that's all we're doing. We're going to be, it's, it's for you to encounter him period. Okay. Um, so this new season, actually every year, the new season begins with Rosh Hashanah. We're actually coming up on a new season. It's usually in September, October, Rosh Hashanah means just the, the head of the year. Okay. Um, the, the Jewish calendar. And so, um, we've been in a new season for a few months now. Matter of fact, we're coming to, you know, like the end of it. So many times God releases and he speaks a word over us and then he proceeds to take us through chronos time. That's day rolling in today, which to us feels like it takes forever and it feels like life moves in slow motion before we see things manifest. But what is really happening is God is preparing things behind the scene. He's watering the seed of the prophetic word over our life. He's tending the seed. He's pulling the weeds that threaten to choke the life out of that which he's spoken to us, his dream in us. And eventually we will come to the place where everything aligns, where Kronos and Kairos overtake each other and you come into a right now manifestation. So when and how long will be captured by now, okay? That's the season that we're in. We're in a now season. The timing is strategic and we have to step through the gate into manifestation and fullness. So we have to know how to deal with the enemy when he wants to prevent us from crossing over the threshold into the fullness of what God has for us. So new doors are opening that'll bring something into the earth that has never been seen before. We believe that we are on the verge of the greatest outpouring of the Holy Spirit and awakening and revival that the world has ever known that will transform form nations. And so as the body of Christ, we have to learn how to pray prayers and make decisions. We have to learn how to issue decrees and take steps of faith that will set the course of events for decades to come in our, in our life and our children and grandchildren's lives, should the Lord tarry. Okay. So our faith actions are preparing the way for our children and our children's children to experience unprecedented victory in Christ. Okay. So you and I, and the vision that God has given you, um, the vision that God has given to your church, the vision that God has given to the churches in your region and around the world, it, it will be important for us to use those three keys that we talked about last week to charter the waters of the great awakening, the third great awakening. So expect wisdom and revelation, expect fresh revelation, expect to have prophetic dreams, expect visions, expect the prophetic to arise in a fresh new way, um, clothed in a new way, mantled in a new way with greater accuracy and humility all rolled into one. Expect your prayer life to go to a new level. Expect new doors to open for you. Expect to advance through those doors. Expect favor that just isn't fair. Expect unlimited provision in your life. Our greatest days are not behind us. They are ahead of us. It's been a few years ago. Now, at least a couple of years, um, I heard Dutch Sheets say, the apostolic prophetic praying church here and around the world has now established air supremacy over the enemy, aerial superiority. He, and this is what he said. He said, not just in theory or head knowledge, but in practical application. So essentially, we need to learn how to pray this way, how to use those three principles to advance kingdom purposes and see breakthrough in our lives and our children's lives. In the past, the church moved in a type of priestly intercession. 
That means we came before the Lord. We offered up our prayers and petitions. We worshiped God. We stood in the gap making requests. And though that's good. That, that, is, that is good. But there's a shift that needs to take place or we're going to get our behinds whipped in the earth. Okay, so we don't want to get our behinds with. We must shift into the kingdom aspect of intercession. Um, we, we have to learn how to pray as a, a part of the royal priesthood, as kings and priests. That's what scripture says. And in Peter, Peter says that we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, you know, a holy generation. Okay, so we represent or represent the king of kings and his kingdom in the earth. How do we do that? We do it from a seated position. We take our seat with him in heavenly places and we don't beg as and like as priests, but from that seated position with him, we decree the will. Now, listen, I know that I could feel it in the air. You know, some people have a problem with that. I mean, I didn't say it. That That's in the Bible, okay? You know that's in the Bible. The Bible says we are seated with him in heavenly places. So from that position, that's how we're supposed to operate. You know, when we get our behinds whipped, when we get up out of our seat and we try to deal with the enemy on his, on his level, you cannot beat him on his level. You must stay in your seat. And from that place, in that heavenly throne room slash courtroom, we overhear the decree and the will of the king and as citizen servants um, of heaven's governmental, we are heaven's governmental officials on the earth, we say what he is saying. We say what he is saying. So listen, Jesus told us to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we need to find out what is his will. Well, you need to get you one of these and read it and you'll find his will. So we, we legislate the realms that he has given us authority in. That word legislate means to make or enact laws to create, provide, and control by legislation. A synonym for legislate is decree, enact, constitute, establish, authorize. So let me explain it this way. When you and I pray, as believers in Jesus, our Lord and Messiah, we are entering into the judicial system of the kingdom of God, okay? When you and I pray, we are his representatives on the earth, okay? We're his governmental officials in the earth. Are you guys with me? Can, can you at least say amen on that part? We represent the kingdom in on the earth, okay? And so, like I said earlier, Jesus' death on the cross was the greatest legal transaction in human history. That's why he said, it is finished. And so he, every legal mandate necessary for the redemption of creation was finished on the cross. The ransom has been paid so Jesus has legally overthrown the powers of darkness, providing humankind with the means by which we can freely be reconciled by faith and confession, clothed in repentance. We can be reconciled back to God. And there's nothing the enemy can do about it. If we just, if we say yes, then we we appropriate that legal transaction that happened on the cross. Okay. So when you and I pray, we are drawing on the legal victory that was established 
at the cross to see it become a reality in the earth. So in other words, when we pray, we are executing into place the verdicts from the finished work of the cross until everything lines up. Okay. So, um, and so we said this, we said this, but it bears repeating. We are the plaintiff in the courtroom, but you are also the bailiff. That means you are an officer of the courtroom of heaven. So if, if, if the, if the word of God says the devil is a thief and a liar and the gavel slams down, the court says, yes, he's guilty. He's a thief and a liar. All the attorneys pack up their bags, shake hands, leave the courtroom. You say, yeah, he's a thief and a liar. And, you know, I told him he was a thief and a liar. And, and everybody leaves. And there's the, the guilty one waiting on the bailiff to carry out the verdict, meaning to arrest him and lock him up. But if you don't, if the bailiff doesn't execute the order of the court, then the enemy walks away free. Did you get that? Okay. So a lot of times when we pray, we're waiting on God to do something. And sometimes God is waiting on us to do something because the Lord is seated. He's already done what, what he's going to do. Okay. So look at Psalm, you, you know, cause you, I can hear, show that to me in the word. I want to see that in the word. Okay. Psalm 149, look at Psalm 149 and let us look at verses six through nine. Okay. Now I have it in your notes in the passion translation. I'm going to read it in that translation, and then I'm going to read it. I have with me the, the New Revised Standard Version. So, God's high and holy praises fill their mouths, for their shouted praises are their weapons of war. Did you, did you see that? These warring weapons will bring vengeance on every opposing force and every resistant power to bind kings with chains and rulers with iron shackles Praise-filled warriors will enforce the judgment doom decreed against their enemies. This is the glorious honor he gives to all his godly lovers. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now listen to it in the, this is the New Revised Standard Version. Same passage, Psalm 149, verses 6 through 9. Let the high praises of God be in their throats and a two-edged sword in their hands. Now, look, look, the high praising, what are we praising? What are we praising God for? We're praising God for the verdict that we just, that was just issued in the courtroom. Okay, we go before God, we present our case and we get the verdict. The enemy is guilty. So we're praising God. We have that praise in, in, in our throat and a two-edged sword in our hand. That's the word of God. That's the word that the king just, that the judge, the king, that's the word that he just issued, that we, we've got it, okay? So, and why do we need it? Because, look at verse seven, because we're going to execute vengeance on the peoples or whatever the, the spirits, the powers are that are operating to bind their kings the kings, the principalities, the powers that are operating through the peoples wreaking havoc in our life. We're going to bind them with fetters and their nobles with chains of, on, of iron. How do we do that? We do that with the, the, the two-edged sword that we have in our hand, the word of God. Look at this, verse 9. To execute on them the judgment decreed, this is glory for all his faithful ones praise the Lord. And so here's what I believe is important for you and I as the body of Christ to know. It's time that we have a revelation concerning the kingdom and um, that we really learn what it means when Jesus told us to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Why would he tell us to pray that if it wasn't something that he wanted to see come into manifestation and for us to participate in. 
So look at this. Genesis 1, God's original plan was a colony of heaven on earth. Okay. And Genesis 1, God creates the heavens and the earth, puts man in the, in the earth and, and gives man dominion. Remember? So a colony of heaven on earth, the kingdom of God on earth. That was the original, that was the original prototype. Okay. But we know because we've read the book that paradise was lost. Dominion was lost by the first Adam through sin and rebellion, him and the woman and paradise is restored by the second Adam, Jesus. Okay. In Matthew six verses nine through 10 and Luke 11, this is what I was just saying. Jesus teaches his disciples to declare Abba, Father, you are our Father in heaven, and your name is holy. Therefore, in your name, we decree kingdom of God come into full manifestation on earth. Kingdom come in our homes. Kingdom of God come on our jobs. Kingdom of, co of God come in our marriages. Kingdom of God come in our children and grandchildren, in our spirit, our soul, our bodies, overtaking sickness and disease. Kingdom of God come. Will of God be done in the earth. Jesus told us to do that. And it's in the declarative tense in, in the Greek. So we're not begging and pleading. We're standing in authority based on who our father is in heaven and in his name, which is holy and above every other name, we decree kingdom of God come. Okay. So what is the kingdom? The kingdom is that that word is basileia. It's the rule, the realm, the reign, the royal power, the dominion, the authority to rule over the royal power of Jesus as triumphant Messiah, the royal power and dignity that is conferred on Christians in um, our Lord's kingdom. So the kingdom is the rule, the reign, the royal power, the dominion, and the authority to rule over, okay? So when we're saying kingdom come, that's what we're saying. So um, the kingdom, the dispensation, the release of glory conferred upon and poured out on disciples that we carry, we carry kingdom authority in our inner man everywhere we go. With all of the kingdom benefits, we carry it. Come on, the word of God says the kingdom is, Jesus said in the gospels, the kingdom is within us. The kingdom is within us. We carry the kingdom everywhere we go, right? Okay, so we essentially have, you're, we're, you're more than you know. You know, God intended for us to partner with him in the coming of that kingdom in the earth. Psalm 103 verses one through five. Look at this. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives your iniquity. That's a benefit. Who heals all. Do you see? Does your Bible say all? All. All our diseases. Listen. He heals all our diseases, whether he heals it on this side of eternity or whether he heals it in Christ. When we take our last breath and step out of this flesh, totally, completely healed, redeemed and set free. Don't get it twisted. Don't let the enemy, don't let the enemy mess with your mind because you thinking, oh, I had, a, I had uh, uh, my neighbor. Oh, and we just prayed for her and she died. So he didn't heal all her diseases. Come on, get a grip. He, we win in Christ. We win. He, the, the word says he heals all our diseases. He, he redeems our life from the pit. That's a benefit. He crowns us with steadfast love and mercy. That's a benefit. He satisfies us with good so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. I take that one. I'm taking that one. That one is mine. Psalm 103 verse 5. <laughs> Psalm 103 verse 5. That, that one is mine.
I want my youth to be renewed like the eagles. I don't know about you. Okay. <laughs> All right. So look at that. This word benefits is the Hebrew word gimel. It means services, that which he has given, the rewards bestowed upon his people. So the scripture is telling us, don't forget, don't forget what's yours as a child of the king and a citizen servant of the kingdom of God. So the kingdom is the dispensation, the release of glory that is poured out upon disciples of Christ that we carry in our inner man everywhere we go. The kingdom, the benefits, the services, the rewards, the gifts given to us and for us by the king. Okay, now this all has to do with prayer. So just, just hang in there with me, okay? So, but you have to, you have to know who you are and whose you are so that you stop praying like prayer is Russian roulette. Prayer is about relationship, you know? And it's about authority that is the, the overflow of that relationship. Listen, King Jesus taught us to declare our relationship with the Father and the holiness of his name. Abba, he who is in heaven, majestic king, ruler of the universe, mighty God, holy is your name. And then we decree kingdom come kingdom of God come, will of God be done. Now that word come is the word erkomai in the Greek. One of my favorite words. It means to appear, to accompany, to enter, to be set, to come from one place to another. So kingdom come into manifestation, kingdom be set. Kingdom come from the throne of heaven into this earth realm. That's, that's what he told us to pray. I pray that every single day, three to four times a day. I pray that um, because I have a, a, a set prayer um, sequence thing that I'm doing. I'll be talking about at my retreat. Um, but the first time that I do it during the day, I establish who the us is you know, kingdom come, will of God be done on earth in us as it is in heaven. And then I make sure that he understands who the us is. I name all my children, my grandchildren, my dad, you know, family, um, uh, you know, the Soterios Ministries, the Table Fellowship, some of the women that, that sit with me at the table fellowship and things that they've asked me to pray about, I call their children by name and speak the coming of the kingdom over their children, see? And um, so, uh, you know, a kingdom come, kingdom appear, come from one place to another. So here, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna break this whole concept apart and then put it back together so that it becomes an explosive weapon in our mouths, in our hearts, and in our hands, okay? So in the body of Christ, we use, oh, let me give myself a little more volume. I didn't realize my volume was turned down on my computer. That should be a little clearer. Um, so in the, in the body of Christ, we use a lot of terminology that people don't always understand what we mean by what we're saying, okay? So with, I declare and decree, what does that mean? You know, what, what does that mean? We need to know so that we, we use it effectively because you remember everything in the spirit realm operates based on law. And if the enemy can keep us buried in deception and ignorance, then he'll keep whipping our butt and we won't know why we're losing in Christ, okay? So declaring and decreeing, what does that mean? The word declare comes from the Hebrew word achva, and it means to make known, to set forth 
and accounting, okay, it is commonly used by customs agents who ask international travelers, do you have anything to declare? If you're going into Israel or you're coming out of Israel, um, everywhere I've been around the world, when you cross, you get your hind parts off of that plane. Matter of fact, sometimes they give you a sheet on the plane that you fill out before you get your behind off the plane asking you if you have anything to declare. Okay. So what are the, the agents, what are they doing? They're asking for specifics about what you have and what you're carrying. What are you carrying in your bag? Do you have anything you need to make known as you come into this country? Do you have anything to declare? Are you guys with me? Okay. So look, all truth is parallel. Remember, God uses things in the natural to help us understand spiritual truths. So as it pertains to us spiritually, declarations, see, we, we want to do this with wisdom. It, it just, it annoys me to know, because yeah, Christian people, we do it all the time. We hear somebody else pray a certain way and we just pick it up and we start doing it. We don't pause to think whether or not it's right or it's crazy or it's effective. We just repeat what, what we've heard. No, let's do some stuff with some wisdom. You know, if you're going to throw a punch, you know, make sure it lands. Don't just be swinging wild. Come on, devil. I hope I hit him. I hope I hit him. No, no. You, you know, look at him. Pow, a well-placed punch. You know, matter of fact, my friend... Um, Tracy, my friend, Tracy Kenty, my long, 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 dear friend that I've been friends with since we were young teenagers. Her husband, Hilmer Kenty, um, what is the former world, um, world lightweight boxing champion. Okay. And I remember, um, he used to fight with, uh, out of the Crocs, um, um, boxers, that whole thing, world champion. I remember one time uh, Hilmer was talking about how boxers get knocked out. And um, he said, and I don't know if this is true, maybe my cousin is watching, um, my cousin, Dr. Mary. Um, so she can tell me if this is true or not. But he says, there's a nerve that runs like somewhere through here into your jaw a nerve that's connected, runs through and goes up into your brain. <laughs> he says that if a well-placed punch, if you hit the boxer, the, the other fighter, in a strategically placed spot and it hits that nerve, he said it's lights out, lights out. Next thing you know, you'll be on the mat and they'll be counting over you. <laughs> so... We want our prayers. We don't want to be fighting like this. Oh, devil, stop it, devil. No, <laughs> no. <clears throat> we want a strategic, specific punch. So what are we doing? Declarations um, are what we speak into the atmosphere, making known what we already have possession of, so listen, you need to get you one of these and read it and find out what you have in Christ, okay? Because Hit the nerd, that's right. So listen, you declare what you already have, not what you want. You declare what you already got. That's a declaration. So we can declare our righteousness because if we have confessed Jesus as Lord, and repented of our sins, we can then we've been made righteous in him. We can declare our salvation because in him we're saved. We can declare our authority and position in him. We can declare our eternal victory and our friendship with God because the word says it. So whatever the word of God says concerning us, we can declare, okay? Because the book says that it is so. So what declarations do is declarations, oh, you know, um, they tighten your belt and they stabilize your core. 
okay, for whatever it is you're getting ready to lift. That declaration is strengthening you. You're declaring, you're declaring who you are and what you got, okay? So um, like in CrossFit, when we're doing particular lifts, when the lift gets really heavy, like today we were doing deadlifts, when you're when you get up above like 100, 150, 200, you know, some you have to put your belt on and you put that belt on and you pull it tight and it and then you lock it and it strengthens your core and stabilizes you for the lift that you're about to engage in. So that's what a declaration does. The declaration is strengthening you in the inner man. It is building and instigating and strengthening your faith. You, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Have you, my son played football in high school and college. And if you watch football players, uh, pro athletes, particularly men, you know how they hit each other. You know, like you see the football players, they'll be smacking each other in the helmet, smacking it, hitting each other in the pads, you know, hitting each other, smacking each other in the head. What are they doing? They're instigating, they're instigate, they're instigating each other, you know, getting each other hyped up, you know, hyped up, ready for the, ready for the battle that's going to happen on the field or on the court. Okay. So that's what a declaration does. That declaration is for you. It is stabilizing your core. So you have to begin to declare what you're carrying because if you don't know what you're carrying, you're not going to take the next step. I'll just have a little sip of my water while you ponder that for a minute. If you do not declare what you're carrying, you more than likely are not going to have any faith in you're not going to have any faith in taking the next step, okay? So look, for example, after careful study of the word, here are some things that you can declare with faith because the word says it. You can declare, I am a child of God. The enemy may not like it, I, de I am anyway. I declare I'm a child of God, Romans 8 and verse 16. I'm redeemed from the hand of the enemy, Psalm 107, verse 2. I am forgiven by the blood of the Lamb, Colossians 1, verses 13 and 14. I'm saved by grace through faith. I am justified. I am sanctified. I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. I am a partaker of the divine nature. Now, what are you doing? You're tightening your belt. You're strengthening your core. I am sanctified. I am justified. Get out of here, devil. And then certain some stuff you won't do because you know that you're sanctified, justified, forgiven. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. The enemy wants to whisper stupid stuff, crazy stuff that you did. You did in your past, and, and, but it's under the blood then you're sanctified, you're justified. You can tighten your belt, square your shoulders, look the devil in the eye, and then make your decree. But that comes after the declaration. I'm redeemed from the curse of the law. I'm delivered from the powers of darkness. I'm led by the spirit of God. I am a huios, mature daughter of the, the king. I'm kept in safety wherever I go. I'm getting all my needs met by Christ Jesus. I'm casting all my cares on him. You will not stress me out today. I'm strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I'm doing all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus. I'm not making this stuff up. This stuff is in your Bible. So you, you have to know who you are. I'm an heir to the blessings of Abraham. I'm observing and doing the Lord's commandments. I'll say that one again. Need to slap that one on your forehead. I'm blessed coming in and going out. I'm an inheritor of eternal life. I'm blessed with all spiritual blessings. I'm healed by his stripes. I'm exercising my authority over the enemy. I'm above only and not beneath. 
I'm more than a conqueror. And it goes on and on and on. See, this is the word of the Lord. I'm establishing God's word here on earth. I'm an overcomer by the blood of the lamb and my testimony. I am daily overcoming the devil. Come on, that's just good. Some of you need to keep this and make sure you say these 40 points every day, okay? I'm not moved by what I see. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe that one was for me. I'm walking by faith and not by sight. I'm casting down vain imaginations. I'm bringing every thought into captivity, particularly the thoughts labeled stupid, lie, deception, stress, all of that, bringing it into captivity. I'm being transformed by a renewed mind. I'm a laborer together with God. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am an imitator of Jesus. I am the light of the world because Christ, who is the light, lives in me and through me. I am God's spoken word. Did you know that you were his poema? That's a Greek term. It means his workmanship created in Christ, that you are his spoken word. When, when people see you, they're, see, they're seeing a living word. What is your life speaking? Come on, guys. That was just good right there. That was good right there. So declarations build us up in the inner man and they strengthen our core faith, okay? But, but if you want to activate the angel armies around you, you must issue a decree. Did you get that? <laughs> Decrees are a tool by which we cause the truths, I felt that. You should circle that in your notes. This sentence, circle this, put arrows pointing to it. This sentence, decrees are a tool by which we cause the truths of the heavenly realm to be manifest in the natural realm. So they become our daily reality. Decrees cause things to move and shift and advance and break through and activate decree. So listen, for instance, I can declare my God is Jehovah Rapha because the scripture says that he is Jehovah Rapha, meaning I'm the Lord who healeth thee, right? So if that's the case, if I declare that my God is Jehovah Rapha, that tightened my belt, yes, he is. So then I can decree, I can decree healing when I'm sick. My God is Jehovah Rapha. That's the declaration. Be healed. That's the decree. Did you get that? <laughs> say it till you see it. Listen, come on. Say it till you see it. I can declare I am a covenant keeper. And I can declare that if I tithe and I give offerings to further the kingdom of God. I'm a covenant keeper. That, that connects me into the covenant, being a tither and, and giving offerings. So I declare I am a covenant keeper. Jehovah Jireh is my provider. That's the Lord who sees and makes provision. Yahweh Yireh, Jehovah Jireh. <clears throat> so I declare that I'm a covenant keeper. My God is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who sees and makes provision. So what does that do? That activates my faith. So then I take the next step and I say, angel armies gather the riches hidden in secret places and bring provision and abundance overflowing my bank accounts so that I never lack any good thing. I just thought I'd let that resound in the atmosphere for a minute. Did you get that? That was worth you tuning in for, just that little bit right there. Listen, let's do another one. I declare Jehovah Shalom is my God. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord my peace. Are you guys with me? I, so what am I doing? I declare Jehovah Shalom is my God. 
the Lord, my God, who, who brings about peace in every situation. I'm, I'm tightening my belt. I'm making my declaration. Therefore, I can walk through my house and say, peace, be still. I can make that decree because my God is the one who brings peace. So I, I can say who he is and what he does I can release it into the atmosphere. I can I shift the atmosphere both internally and externally. That was like, man, I feel like I've been working out <laughs> with, with this, with these. No, for some reason, I feel like I've been working out tonight. I'm telling you the truth. We need to get this. So listen, in your notes, I put an activation there for you, okay? Um, so you, what, what is it that you need? Determine your need. Take an issue. What is the challenge? What is a problem that you're facing? Um, a challenge, something. So you, who and what does the word of God say you are as it relates to that need? Um, let's take, I will, we'll, okay, we'll take a sample. Um, those of you that I know, well, that's, that's most of us. Those of us who have adult children, <laughs> you have adult children, even if they're not, even if they're young people, they could be younger than adults. Sometimes they do crazy stuff, you know, and, um, it just tears at your heart. Okay. So how do we strengthen our core to begin to make some decrees over the atmosphere in their life? Um, the, uh, let's say they're not living righteously. Um, well, then we want to, one of the names of the characteristics of God is Jehovah Sidkenu the Lord, our righteousness. He is Jehovah in Kadesh, the Lord who sanctifies. Okay. So we, if we got some people that need some sanctification and some righteousness going on in their life. Okay. Um, then we can begin to Lord, my God, you are Yahweh. Sid canoe, the Lord who is a righteous God, righteous King. You are the Lord, my righteousness. You are Jehovah in Kadesh, the Lord who sanctifies, who sets us apart. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. You are omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent. So God who sanctifies and makes righteous, brood over the top of my children, and I decree righteousness prevail in their hearts. Sanctification, overtake them. Craft a declaration based on what the word says and decree the answer into your need. De circle that in your notes. Decree the answer into the into, to your need, okay? And then expect the court to issue a verdict on your behalf. Oh, and this is coming up too. Declare that he is um, the Lamb of God whose sacrificial um, death takes away the sins of the world, okay? So you're going to declare that he is the Lamb, declare that he is our Passover, declare that he's the one who sanctifies, declare that he's our righteousness, then craft a decree and speak it into the need, God Almighty, you know, cover whatever it is, whoever it is, with your blood, cleansing them of unrighteousness, breaking, you know, the, the, the chains of rebellion and sin and debauchery and lasciviousness and concupiscence, whatever, whatever you can think of that's in the word. Cover it with your blood, oh God, and sanctify and make righteous. Decree it and then expect the, the gavel to slam and the court to issue a verdict on your behalf. 
That blessed my soul. If it didn't bless nobody else, it blessed me. I tell you the truth. I need to do this for me. Okay, let's let's press on. Because we got we got like 20 more minutes. Okay. So dec decrees are a tool to fulfill Matthew 6 and verse 10. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Decrees manifest heaven on earth. Did you get that? Decrees manifest heaven on earth. So let me use a military example. The Holy Spirit gave me this as I was thinking about this, you know, a couple of years ago, several years ago when I first taught this and praying about it and talking to the Lord about it. And here's, here's what the Holy Spirit said to me. Cause I, you know, um, I, I did boot camp, um, summer of, uh, 1981, 1981. Yeah. Summer of 81 Paris Island, South Carolina, South Carolina. So Marine Corps drill instructors. Okay. And they, there were all types of things they would have us do that to hype you up. Okay. So a picture a drill instructor, Marine drill instructor. Okay. You know, sharp, you know, you know, you know, fit, fierce, you know, that's my, my personal bias as a Marine vet. Picture a platoon of Marines or soldiers, you know, and army, um, but with, with the Marines standing at attention. They are locked. Now, any military person listening knows when you are in the position of attention, you do not move without a command. Okay. You do not move. The person next to you could be falling. I remember we had a command inspection. That's the one where you have your M16, you're in your uniform. As the drill instructor steps in front of you, you bring the, the, the weapon up, flip it. They, you know, they take it, you know, they look at it. They do all of that stuff. Give it back to you. You put it back as real military. Okay. Nobody breaks rank. You better not break rank. You're going to be in tons of trouble. And the girl, the girl standing like in front of me and like maybe one person over had her legs locked. There's a way to stand without cutting off circulation. She was cutting off circulation and she was starting to rock. She was going to pass out. And I was thinking, Lord, she going to hit the ground because I'm not breaking rank. Okay. So the Lord drew upon that understanding. And here's what he said to me. He says, the DI, the drill instructors can walk in between those ranks and what, and, and what they're doing is they're making declarations and they'll say, you, you privates, you are lean, mean fighting machines. You bev Eagle Globe and anchor over your head <clears throat> and on your heart. You are first to fight, first to die. You're an elite fighting force. You are United States Marine Iwo Jima. Oh yeah. You know, all of that, all of that. And you're like, yeah, you know, you know, we're, we're getting pumped up, but not one Marine will move until the drill instructor issues a command, which is a decree. Okay. Until one of those drill instructors says, um, far away or all ten, huh? even if you're at parade rest, you still don't break rank, you know, but far away, huh? Allah, until they start calling commands, nobody moves. They can make whatever declaration they want. Are you guys getting this? So listen, Job 22 and verse 28 says, you will also decree a thing and it will be established for you and light will shine on your ways. Okay. And so the English definition of decree is a statement of truth that carries the authority of a court order. All right. And so a, a decree is a statement of truth that carries the authority of a court order. And when a defendant is convicted of a crime and sentenced to prison, he cannot ignore that sentence because the authority of the court order is such that upon conviction, the defendant has no further say in the matter. Okay. 
The same is true with decrees in the spirit realm. When we decree God's provision and blessings over our lives, then anything purposed against our provision and blessing can have no further say in the matter. When we decree God's peace and unity in our family, then anything purposed against peace and unity has no valid objection or standing to come against us. Now you have to make sure when you issue these decrees that you have dealt with, remember all the protocol, remember you deal with the legal issues so the enemy cannot rear up his ugly head against you. Um, so when you think about like what I was saying about the... Um, the, the example that the Lord gave me about the drill instructors, the decrees manifest heaven on earth. And that military example, the declaration tightens our belt, but, but we don't, nothing advances until we issue a decree or a command. Like the platoon doesn't move until the drill instructor gives the command. So the angel armies are with you, but until they get a decree to carry out, they, they're with you. You can declare all day, but until you issue a decree, then activity starts. Okay. The biblical context of decrees is that they are the same as the will and purposes of God. Decreeing his will establishes his purposes. I'll say it again. Decreeing his will establishes his purposes. Okay. What are you all saying? Okay, I don't know what Jewel is trying to say on there. Um, okay, decreeing his will establishes his purposes. So that's why you and I have to feed on the word of God. Okay? You must eat the book. You must know the word. Eat the word. Eat the word. Make it breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Pray it. Say it. Read it. You know, meditate on it. Um, John 1 and verse 1 and then verse 14. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. John 6, verse 54 and following says, whoever eats my flesh, that's the, that's the word, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood, he's not only talking about communion, but that flesh um, can be, the word became flesh, the word. So whoever eats the word, as well as communion, the body and blood of Christ. Um, so whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is food indeed. Communion as well as the word of God. And my blood is drink indeed. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. As the living father sent me and I live because of the father. So whoever feeds on me at my table and it through the book will also live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate manna and died. He who eats this bread at his communion table and this living word will live forever. The word became flesh. Eat his flesh. Eat the word. Because the strength of your decree is rooted in the word, both logos, the written word, and Rhema, when he breathes on it, and you go, wow. That when he when he a word from the word leaps leaps off the pages at you, that you that's what you want to begin to speak into the atmosphere around you until things shift. See. <sighs> Let me take a moment. Are you guys still there? I know that's a lot. I know. I've said a lot. So that's why I put the notes on my Facebook page so that you guys can slowly go over it and chew on it, you know, yourself. So that you can, you can check it. 
and make sure you don't receive anything that I've said that does not line up with the word of God. Okay. But let's keep going. All right. In Hebrew, decree means to divide, separate, and destroy. Now you got to get this. Okay. Hebrews 4 and verse 12 says, for the word of God is alive and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and able to judge the thoughts and intents of the heart. So now the Hebrew word for decree means to divide, to separate, and to destroy. So hold that intention with Hebrew, the book of Hebrews chapter four, verse 12. This definition reveals more of what happens in the spirit realm when you and I make a decree. So we really need to understand this. So let's look at Psalm 112. We'll take Psalm 112. When we declare, I'm blessed, because Psalm 112 verse one tells us that. Wait, let's just, just get it. Psalm 112. Give me a minuto. Psalm 112. Verse 1. Praise the Lord, it says. Happy, or, or this translation is happy. That word is blessed. Okay, and blessed are those who fear the Lord, who greatly delight in his commandments. So if you walk in awe and reverence of the Lord, if you delight in his commandments, then you are happy, you are blessed, okay? So we can declare, I'm blessed. Then you can decree, blessings of God rest upon my life. And, and, and the particular type of blessing that you're looking for. So the word says I'm blessed. The word, Lord, your word says that I'm blessed. You, just, you, de you declare that I'm blessed. So now you can decree, blessings of the Lord overtake me rest on me. We establish the blessing, but remember the definition of decree is divide, separate, and destroy. So when I issue the decree, I separate from myself anything purposed against my being blessed. I separate from me, I divide it from me, and it destroys the plans of the enemy to keep me from being blessed. Did you get that? Praise the Lord. So if I combine a declaration with the prayer that God wrote, then I will have a supercharged prayer. All right, you do that. Praise God. Declare and decree. Put it all together. And then you have to be patient and let God answer in God's time. Okay. All right. So did you get that? When, when we declare, look at, look at Psalm, look at Psalm 112, verse 2, look at verse 2. This is talking about the people, the, the people that are blessed. What does it say in verse 2? All you moms and dads who got grown people that belong to you, who acting like they're crazy. Look at this. This is talking about you. Your descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Okay, so look at this. So I can declare that if the translation says, my children are strong and full of integrity, that's what the word says. Lord, I declare your word says that my descendants will be mighty in the land and in their generation, they, they are upright and they will be blessed. So I can, whatever your, however your translation reads it, you make that declaration. Then you decree, therefore, I, de I decree. Now, when you decree, you are separating off of them everything that goes against their being strong, their having integrity, their having supernatural strength, all of that. You, 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 you're because of the Hebrew meaning of the word. You see what I'm saying? 
So I declare my children are strong and full of integrity. So I decree supernatural strength is your portion and integrity rests upon them because that's what the word says. So I declare it. Now I decree it. And when you decree it, the angel armies around you begin to move to carry it out. Okay. So we divide. So what you're doing is you're dividing your children's strength from their weakness, separating dishonesty from and unrighteousness from within their midst and their hearts. We, we need to find everything the Bible says about the descendants of the righteous and begin to declare what the Bible says, then decree it. See, are you guys with me? Oh man, it is 824. Where did the time go? Okay, so look at this. Look at, look at, look at the next verse, verse number three. This is Psalm 112. Wealth and riches are in their house. In whose house? In the house of the blessed. In the house of those who fear the Lord and who delight in his commandments. Now, if that's you, then you remove the enemy's legal right to be holding up your stuff. So you declare wealth and riches are in my home and righteousness endures forever over me. So you, you declare that my home brim, brims with wealth. I mean, all kinds of wealth, not just financial wealth, the wealth of peace, the wealth of health, the wealth of stability, you know, the wealth of protection. My, my home brims with wealth. So I call on the angel armies to collect vast resources of peace and, and um, holiness and righteousness and whatever it is that you need and deliver it to my doorstep. Matt, better yet, across the threshold into every room in my home. I, and so when we do that, we establish our wealth and we divide and separate from us and destroy the spirits of lack and poverty off of our life and off of our generations, okay? Now, let me tell you this real quick and we'll pick it up again next time because I love this. The German, the word for decree in German is diktat, diktat. It is the English equivalent of our word decree and it means a harsh judgment imposed on a defeated enemy that cannot be opposed. Did you get that? The spiritual ramifications are stunning. So we see here that when we, as citizen servants of the kingdom, when we decree, here's what happens. First, when we declare, we're tightening our core, we're strengthening our core. And then out of that, when we make our decrees, we're speaking God's blessings upon our lives. We're instituting the very will and purposes of God. We are separating and destroying the plans of the enemy off of us. And we are imposing a harsh judgment that the enemy cannot oppose that means when you see your children and, and they appear in the natural to still be crazy, you can smile and give them a hug. You can smile at the crazy people that they with because you are standing on a declaration and a decree that resonates in the halls of the high court of heaven and the angel armies are moving to bring it into manifestation in the earth realm. Beloved, did you hear what I said? So I'm going to stop right there. Let me, uh, let me highlight that. And we're going to pick it up again with the German diktat. Okay. I will um, highlight this in a color that will stand out so that, okay. We're going to pick that up next time. Okay. So listen, we, we have to understand. I'll tell you this and I'm done. When I was in the Marine Corps boot camp, you are issued an M16 A1 air-cooled rifle, okay? And that was your weapon. That thing was chained to your bed. It went everywhere with you. They, we took classes. They taught us everything about it, the history about it, the history about the upgrades on it. Um, of course, it's a different one now, but when I was in boot camp, that was back in 81, so I'm sure it's a different weapon than the one they use today. But this one, they taught us how to take it apart, how to put it together. 
bolt by bolt, how to clean it, take it apart, break it apart, put it back together, bolt by bolt, because it was your weapon. And then they would put you in a room in the dark, turn out all the lights you had to touch and by feel, know which bolt, what it was, and put that thing together and take it apart in the dark. And then they would time you, okay, to make sure, because when you're on a battlefield, that's going to save your life. So listen, th what I'm trying to share with you uh, um, is to equip you to be victorious um, and to be re representatives of the kingdom who walk in the authority of the king. Okay, listen, guys, this is Pastor Bernadine Wernley Daniels. It's been my pleasure to be with you. So Terios Ministries Incorporated. Um, I'll be here next week, God willing, and the creek don't rise, as they say. If you want to be a blessing to Soterios Ministries, you can give at paypal.me forward slash Soterios Ministries. Make sure it says Soterios Ministries, and then you see my picture pop up there. You'll know you got the right link. Or you can send an offering to Cash App, dollar sign, Dr. Bernie, S-M-I, stands for Soterios Ministries, Inc., Everything you give goes into the ministry, does not go into my pocket. We use it for benevolence, for materials, for all of this stuff that we do that we give you for free. So um, God bless you. Um, read, study these notes, pray, hang out with the Lord. I will see you next time. And if you want to meet me at St. Francis Retreat Center for the Ancient Pathways Retreat, July the 16th through the 18th, you need to hurry up and register, okay? And um, so that we make sure that we make room for you. God bless you, and I will see you next time. Take care.